Herbert Mullen, 25, butchered 13 strangers in 1973 because God told him to save California from earthquakes. In the shadows of Santa Cruz, California, during the early 1970s, an unthinkable terror was unleashed. The name of this terror was Herbert Mullen, a man whose distorted reality led him on a brutal killing spree that still haunts the city's memory to this day. Born on April 18, 1947, Herbert William Mullen seemed to have a normal upbringing. A bright student, athletic and popular amongst peers, he was a boy marked for success. However, the glimmer of normalcy shattered when, at age 18, Mullen's best friend died in a car accident. No thanks to his rampant use of LSD and marijuana, the tragedy sent Mullen spiraling into a realm of paranoia, schizophrenia, and eventually violent murders. And uh, the thing about Herbie, uh, my, my actual first con my first conversation with him was he hands me the headphones. He goes, listen to this. So I'm assuming he's got a cassette player in his pocket and he's playing some cassette and stuff. So I put the headphones on and I'm listening and I'm listening and I'm listening and, and there's nothing. I hear him, not a sound. And, and I look down and he's holding the cord with the plug-in in in his hand. And I go, what am I supposed to be hearing, Herbie? He goes, sounds of the universe. Isn't that awesome? As he ventured into his early 20s, Mullen's mind began to fill with delusions of earthquakes that he believed would swallow California whole. But according to him, there was a way to prevent it, blood sacrifice. In his distorted mind, he was convinced that human sacrifices would appease the earth and keep the disaster at bay. His delusion was so profound that he believed his own father, through telepathy, had commanded him to kill. Here's this wonderful young man, and a few years later, he's a mass murderer and a serial killer. I mean, that's, that's not something that happens to the average person. What happened? The autumn of 1972 marked the start of Herbert Mullen's horrendous murder spree. His first victim was Lawrence Whitey White, a solitary homeless man well known to the local community for his peaceful and rather friendly demeanor. The 55-year-old Whitey spent his time at the Henry Cowell Redwood State Park, his home amongst the majestic trees. In broad daylight, without a hint of remorse, Mullen attacked the unsuspecting man with a baseball bat. Eventually, it was Whitey's absence that alerted local residents that something was wrong. When his battered body was discovered, shockwaves of fear rippled through the community. I mean, the hair on the back of my neck just stood up. I mean, I was it spit, sent chills all the way down my spine. Whispers of a murderer loose on the streets began to circulate. With the taste of violence now on his lips, Mullen soon claimed his second victim, Mary Margaret Guilfoyle, a student from Cabrillo College. He innocently offered her a ride, and given that she was running late, she reluctantly agreed. While driving, Mullen stabbed her on the chest in one cold-hearted fashion. This time, his paranoia and dark tendencies got way worse. He not only stabbed her, but he essentially cut her open, pulled out all of her intestines and laid them out. Mullen committed the heinous act of dissecting Gilfoyle's corpse, a twisted investigation into his bizarre theories on environmental pollution. But to the fear of the nation, he was just getting started. On November 2nd, 1972, Mullen visited St. Mary's Catholic Church in Los Gatos with the intent of confessing. While in the confessional booth, Mullen spoke with Father Henry Tomai. Under delusions, Mullen believed that Father Tomai had volunteered to be his next sacrifice. Reacting to these hallucinatory instructions, Mullen brutally attacked Father Tomei, using his fists and feet before stabbing him, leading to the priest's tragic death on the spot before Mullen fled the scene. As the year 1973 unfolded, Herbert Mullen's violent urges heightened, leading him to seek out Jim Gianera, a former high school acquaintance who had introduced him to marijuana. Mullen blamed Gianera for his descent into a life of substance abuse and hallucinations. The confrontation culminated in a cold-blooded double homicide as Mullen shot both Jim and Joan Gianera in the head before savagely stabbing their bodies. However, the bloodshed did not end there. Concerned that Kathy Francis and her two young children, Demon and David, could serve as witnesses to his obtaining Gianera's address, Mullen decided to eliminate them as well. The brutal act saw Mullen shooting Kathy Francis and her two young sons, extinguishing four innocent lives in a single day. And like a twisted, sinister movie, 
Mullen's madness did not cease there. In February 1973, he encountered four teenage boys camping in Santa Cruz's state park. Impersonating a park ranger, Mullen first warned them to leave, accusing them of polluting the forest. When they failed to heed his warning, Mullen returned the following day, executing them with his .22 caliber pistol. It was on February 13, 1973, when Mullen was finally apprehended. Mullen readily admitted to the killings, calmly recounting the details and revealing his twisted logic of sacrifice to prevent an earthquake. In court, Mullen's lawyers attempted to plead insanity, but the jury wasn't swayed. Instead, they found him guilty of first-degree murder in two cases and second-degree murder in the others. Mullen was sentenced to life in prison. The tale of Herbert Mullen is more than just a chronicle of senseless violence. It's a testament of the devastating effects of untreated mental illness. His horrific crimes forever left a scar on the peaceful landscapes of California. Join us next time as we continue to peel back the dark veil on humanity's most terrifying tales.